Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at something pretty cool with TouchOSC and these are the basics of system exclusive messages. So what are system exclusive messages? It's a good question. And it can be a little bit confusing, but it's basically a message that is sent via MIDI. It is a MIDI message. And this is sent to a device and can control a variety of parameters. So when you think about your MIDI keyboard, or perhaps you have one of those machine you know, controller things, I've got a, a Kai LPD8, I got one of these. Uh, you can do MIDI learn on, let's say Reaper, and you can control things differently. Uh, but when you think about the play button that's on your MIDI uh, keyboard and for some reason when you push it, it says play in your DAW, uh, sometimes it's sending a system exclusive message. And these system exclusive messages can be used for a lot of other things as well, including patches, right? So if you update your machine, your synthesizer, your MIDI keyboard, whatever, uh, a lot of times the update is being sent through with a system exclusive message. People will use system exclusive messages to send updates. So that's uh, an important part of it. And I say that up front because it should be a warning that if you're going to try and use system exclusive messages with hardware, be very careful. You don't want to mess it up. What we're going to do with system exclusive messages is some really basic things, which is just transport controls. There are a lot of great resources out there about system exclusive messages. Uh, this is from Indiana University, which explains a lot of this. Uh, Wikipedia also has some great information, as does the uh, like MIDI Society or whomever they are. But you can see there's a ton of different types of messages. So we'll get into this in a second. Now, if you watched my video on FL Studio, you saw that we used system exclusive messages to control the transport because we weren't able to do something with MIDI Learn. And that's exactly what we're going to do here, uh, but we're going to show it on a different DAW. Um, like I said, system exclusive messages can be really cool and really powerful. So if you are working with a DAW and you cannot do a MIDI Learn um, or you know program the DAW to receive that information when you want to press play or stop or record, uh, system exclusive messages is a way to get around that within your touch OSC template. So first step, let's build what this template is going to be. You'll see what messages we're going to be sending to the DAW. So here we are in touch OSC. Everything is connected. My iPad is connected. Uh, we're going to be building this out on the desktop like I usually do because it's a lot easier for you to see. And then we're going to be actually running this on a Mac. So first things first, let's create a couple different buttons. We're going to do a button that is going to be for uh, basically play uh, from a starting point. So let's make this green. We'll do a triangle. Make this nice and big. And then we're going to do a different type of play. And you'll see why. Make this purpley. Uh, and we're going to make a uh, record button. So let's make a button. Let's make this a circle. And then we're going to do a rewind and fast forward button. So let's make another triangle. I'm going to take this and duplicate it. And just to keep myself organized, we are going to lose the background. And we are going to make the outline full. So this one's going to be going that direction, like that. Let's copy that, paste it here. And then this one's going to be going west, because we're going to be going that direction. So let's make this a different color. So yeah, these are fast forward, rewind, record. And then there's going to be a play from a starting point, And there's going to be kind of a general play and pause. All right, so we're going to take a look at what a system exclusive message would look like. So in Reaper here, I already have uh, Touch OSC connected. I am using the bridge to send MIDI over Wi-Fi. Uh, and everything's already preloaded. If this is one of the first Touch OSC videos you are watching, uh, you probably want to jump back to an earlier video where I explain how to connect with the bridge or with different DAWs. 
So we're going to take our first button here and we are going to turn this into a toggle press. And now let's add our MIDI message. So our exclusive message, we go MIDI and then instead of type or at type instead of control change, we're going to go to system exclusive message. You see, we only have a few parameters here. I'm actually going to switch this to number two because that is what my MacBook is on. And what we're going to do is send a play command. So you can see we already have kind of uh, a hint of what we're supposed to start with here. And that message is going to be for play is F0 and then 7F, right, to uh, start that out. 01, because we're using that device. 06 as a command. 01 for play. And F7 to close that out. Now, if you're confused at where I got that from, take a look at this Wikipedia page because it shows, again, these are what I was doing. So F0, 7F, 01 for the device. 06 for the command. 01 uh, is stop and zero two is play, but you'll see why. So now we're gonna add another message and we're gonna go MIDI, change this to system exclusive message. And since this is a toggle, when we press it again, it's gonna turn it off. Again, I'm gonna move this to two and then we're gonna put in that second message, which was F zero seven F. And then we're gonna go zero one and then zero six zero two, which is play, but in this you'll see how it's going to stop it. And then F7. We need to change this from any to the play is going to be at fall. And the uh, other one, the second one here is going to be at rise. All right, so now on our MacBook, I'm going to push this button and it starts playing. And then I turn the toggle off and it stops and it's gonna start playing from wherever the cursor is. So if you're building a template and you need transport controls, system exclusive messages can be an easier way to set up transport controls than doing any sort of MIDI learn. All right, so let's set up another message. This is to record. So let's take our record right here and what we're gonna do is uh, not gonna turn this one into a toggle. Let's go ahead and add a MIDI message. We're gonna change this to two, and then we're gonna change this to system exclusive. And here we go. So this one's gonna be F0, 7F, just like the others, and then 0106, and then 06 for record, F7 to close it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and arm this track here, and then let's go ahead and push our record button and you can see, hello, hello, it is catching me. And then I'm going to use our green button again to stop it. Now check out this issue here. So I'm gonna press this record button. And the first time I hit the uh, play control, you can see it stopped in the bottom left corner. You see how the record turned off? It's recording, I hit it it stopped recording and then I have to hit it again to stop it. Be aware that you'll probably wanna use another button to control that stop. Otherwise it'll keep playing and it'll just stop recording. Okay, so let's check out the fast forward and rewind buttons. All right, so our fast forward button here, let's go ahead and add a MIDI message again. And you can see it's all pretty simple for what we're doing. Uh, these are all really similar. So this one is going to be uh, going forward, F0, 7F, 0, 1, 0, 6 for our commands. Now to go forward, we're going to go 0, 4, and then let's close it out with an F7. And now let's do our rewind button. You guessed it, MIDI system exclusive message. And now we go F0, 7F, 0, 1, 0, 6. And now to rewind, we're going to do 0, 5, and then close it out with F7. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch these over to number two and that'll make it easier. So now on this MacBook, if I go ahead and hit my arrow, you can see I'm jumping. Now it's jumping twice. Duplicate messages are a common thing and I always see questions about that. Uh, I cover that in a lot of different videos. There's like 
my third tips video, the MIDI errors video. There's a bunch of them, back to basics, I think even. Uh, this is happening because the MIDI message is being sent on any. So we want to switch that to be either on rise or fall. So you see that here on the MacBook, if I push the blue button down, it moved up to three. And now if I let it go, it moved up again. So let's go ahead and select this and change it from any to fall. Same for the rewind button. And now on our MacBook, you can see it's only going once. And even if I hold it down, it's not sending it until I let go. All right, so this last message we're gonna take a look at is that purple button that we had in the center. And this is kind of a play pause button, uh, which is a really useful thing as it won't jump back to the beginning, it'll stop where the cursor is. So this one, if we take a look at the Wikipedia page, this one is 09, pause. So let's go ahead and input that. All right, so we have our purple button here and it is currently momentary. We're going to add a MIDI message system exclusive. And now let's go ahead and put this one in F zero seven F zero one zero six zero nine. And then F seven to close it out. Now I'm going to switch this over to two. And then instead of any, I'm going to put this one at rise. Lance, hey buddy, lay down. Lance, 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 stop. Waiting for the dog to stop moving around. All right, so we got that. Let's go ahead and check it out in Reaper. So I'm going to press the purple button here and you can see we are playing. And now I'm gonna push it again and it pauses and it moves the cursor up to where it stops. So I'm gonna do that rewind button, rewind all the way back to the beginning. I'm gonna press the purple button again and you can see we're playing and then hit it one more time and it stopped. So let's see, how's that different from the play button? I hit play, the cursor's at the beginning, I hit play again, and then we stop and we are back at the beginning. The cursor is back at the beginning. With the purple one, we hit play, and now we are going to stop at measure three. So one last thing to check out here is that if I was to rewind here, I'm gonna hit the record button, we are recording, and then if I hit the pause button, now we are stopping, right? We don't need to hit that twice. So let's go ahead and activate number two here. So we're gonna come back to the beginning here, hit record. And now I'm going to hit the pause button. And you can see it has paused it. Right down here in the corner, it is showing that it's paused. So there is a lot here with system exclusive messages. You can see that there's a lot that you can do. Uh, that Wikipedia page really shows quite a few different messages, but these are the basics for setting up a transport using system exclusive messages. Uh, and this is a really cool, simple way to control your DAW. Uh, so if you have a transport page, you got a pager that just has transports, try using these system exclusive messages instead of your MIDI learn, you'll be able to save either MIDI messages or the time it takes to pair those two up. So hopefully you've learned something, this makes sense, it helps your template. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we have lots more to cover, as always. I'll see you next time and thanks for watching.